front over here, turn left. Go up. Yeah. Yep, yep, beach view road. Then later you go down, there'll be a car park. Hi, uh, my name is Zi Heng, and I'm a Year 3 Physics major studying at NUS. So for science faculty during our camps, we like to have our beach games so over at this area. So uh, yeah, so that was more or less where I was injured. And yeah. On the third of August, uh, twenty thirteen, um, I was at the Palawan Beach at Sentosa um, with my group of friends for the science orientation week. One of the core members like. Um, who is my friend, so I asked like, hey, do you have anything that I can do to, to gain more points since it's a camp? So I asked her and she said, oh yeah, you just uh, dive in the water, after that just mochi on the sand, then you give me some points, okay, and then why not, it's like a camp, everyone is just playing around. So then after that, just dive in. And when I took a dive, um, mm. what happened is, um, the next moment I couldn't move, but I realised like, I can't move my hands, I can't move my body, I can't even stand up or struggle to get people's attention. We asked when I was about to breathe in water, then my friends happened to pull me up. Mm. So, and, uh, probably the dive, the angle, it's like just nice that it caused one of the bones in my neck to fracture. The fracture actually injured my spinal cord, which caused me to be paralyzed from chest down. So, uh, there wasn't really a lot of like, emotions because initially I still don't really know what's happening. Then after that it's more rehab. In the first half a year I was like doing rehab like almost a a every single day. I'm going for acupuncture every week. Then I'm also going for functional electrical stimulation bike. I'm now currently at uh, Serangoon to use the functional electrical stimulation bike. So basically, um, electrodes are stick to different parts of my leg. Then after that, the current will run and you will contract your muscles to cause the muscle to cycle on its own. Initially, I thought this was temporary, so I just didn't really give much trouble. I just thought, okay, um, yeah, life is going to go back to normal after I recover. La. When I was well, I was a very active person. I participated in a lot of activities. So uh, on my own, back in year one, actually I joined the uh, uh, NUS Science uh, Din and Dance Committee. I joined um, the swimming team back in Tamasic JC, and that's when I started to learn competitive swimming. Time to time, I would like, wonder like, what would things be like if I didn't injure myself. For people with spinal cord injury, even if you recover, you will never be able to return back to that kind of level of um, fitness, that level of um, uh, agility in the past. Yeah, because everything has to relearn and retrain again. Uh, and there's no such thing as a complete recovery. Because regardless of how the nerves can recover itself, you will not be fully 100% complete as it was in the past. So the injury, I didn't really um, cry, like at all, all the way until like, I think more than half a year after my injury. During the physio session, um, I was just uh, practicing some like transferring stuff and that kind of stuff. Then after that, um, one of the 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 the, the physio made a comment like, "Hey, what? Like, why no no shank is it or what?" Then uh, after that that physio and I came out, I was like. For a moment, I just broke down. Like the first time that I break down after my injury, um, 
just like felt like, hey, like last time I could do so many things, I was so fit, then why suddenly now I couldn't do anything. For my family, just uh, on time, I just felt that I'm really grateful for them because um, this is my own injury, but all of them to go through it together with me, especially for my mom to go through so much like uh, difficulty taking care of me when she at their age they could she just just relax. It's the age where the kids start to take over and kind of actually at this point in time they actually have to go through all these challenges with me uh, and just felt that they don't really deserve all this. But and and it really even pushes me on. And for my friends also, they are always there to help me. Yeah, so for me, I feel that I was really fortunate that throughout my whole recovery journey, that my friends and family has been around me all this while. It was their their support that makes things also quite a, lot, quite a lot easier for me. They were the reason why I wanted to, to continue to work hard, to continue to stay, stay positive, so that um, I do not um, disappoint them. And, yeah, and I hope that I, I could also be the reason for them to continue to live happily. I feel like I didn't know much about him, but as I got to know him, he's a very inspirational person whereby when you just need to approach him and he'll be very willing to talk to you, he'll be very willing to share with you about his life experiences, what he went through. Like for me, at first, I, uh, there was always some form of distance when you want to ask a person because these kind of things are quite, um, people might not want to share in the, in the first place, but he's very open about it and he is very, uh, he, despite his incident right he's actually a very driven person so you can actually see how actually he's able to uh, overcome his downfall his setback and yet still be very optimistic Even though I can't really do much now, like really in terms of the physical independence, it's like very, very low. Like then after that, but I realized that hey, there's still uh, other areas that I can contribute, I can still still do. So as long as I focus on those things that I can do, there's still ways that I can contribute to the people around me. I was doing as much as I could during then, which I was very glad that when I look back, that's, I'm glad that quite a lot of things that I've done, all these things that I've done also, like I, I was uh, one of the house head in science camp, so that I got in the position to be the best director. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the committee behind NUS Science Best 2015! I really joined as much things as I could. So that I won't like look back and regret like, yeah, why I give myself the excuse to not participate in anything. Because after my injury, actually, if I don't join anything, people will perfectly understand. People don't expect me to join anything. So I, but I don't want my disability to be an excuse that I don't join things. So also, hopefully that, because some people feel that, oh, it's very hard to cope or something. I hope that also can be uh, uh, a reason that they want to join things. Because if someone like me can, can continue to participate, I'm sure they also can, can, can do so in their small ways. 
ऐप continue to try to as much as possible try to accomplish things that I could do. And that um, over time I actually uh, build more strength based on the feature that I go, like strengthen myself, then the more things I can do starts to get better. Having been been through public swimming before actually uh, I don't mind to to join back. Um, swimming again and to actually fight for Singapore. As time passed, I also started to realize, like, even no matter how much I can recover, I will not be able to be as what I was in the past. So. I see this as uh, the injury is a new new beginning to me. I'm already different from uh, who I was in the past. 过去的就不要去想它，因为已经过了。最重要就是前面的路，而且自己要坚定你的意念，一定可以，就看。The things that really happen. Um, there's no point to ask like why or some things. I think within reasonable probability, these kind of things can happen to anybody. So it, it could also happen to me. So since they have happened, like um, I can choose to be happy or sad every single day. So like, why do I choose to be sad? I can choose to be happy because the day will still pass. So um, for me, I just choose to be happy every single day.